Welcome back to the Field of 68's Selection Sunday Marathon. We're taking over. It's the weave. It's weave time. We're not doing best bets. We're just talking bracket, fellas. Best course, takes. We're still presented by Bet Rivers. Don't you forget, Matthew. Yeah. And we do have our bracket group in Bracket Fanatics. It is in the description for this video on YouTube. So if you're hanging out in the chat, go ahead and click on the Bracket Fanatics site, the link. I believe there's like $500 up for grabs uh, for the winner. So, you know, it's actually worth it. Uh, it's free to enter and there's money involved. So we, we like that. Uh, fellas, all right. We've had a couple uh, shows take rounds at this bracket, but it's our turn. We're going to hit it with our own unique spin, Kai. Matt, Matt's raring to go over there. It's weird to see Matt in that room without the glare of the sun because we never we never do this at night. It's it's a lot nicer, Jim. Yeah, my, my blinds are getting some nice repeat right now. I'm just excited to see all the Chad Mob chatter so far. Just our people coming back for the Mecca. Good to see oh, yeah. him. Good to hear from him. It's live. Uh, Kai. Yes. You and I are bracketology boys. We are. We did not get all 68 correct. No. I, I don't believe anybody did. No. Uh, and the reason we did not is because of the two teams in the West region, Kai. And that's where we're going to start mm -hmm. in the West. I want to go straight to that because I think it is a wonderful talking point. Rutgers and Notre Dame, they made it in. We did not have them in. Do you understand why they made it in, even if you are, even if we got it wrong, or are you kind of still like, I find this baffling? No, oh, Jim, I find it baffling because two teams that didn't make the field have very similar resumes to them and are superior, in my opinion, to both them. For instance, number one, Rutgers against uh, Texas A&M. You can go, excuse me, Oklahoma, go down the line and their quality wins. They, they both have quite a few, but Oklahoma beats them every other metric. Rutgers net is insane. Uh, Texas, or excuse me, Oklahoma should be in the field. Texas A&M against Notre Dame. Again, go down the line. Texas A&M has a better resume. And Texas Tech won head-to-head, -head Jim, against Notre Dame. Come on! Yeah, Those two teams the, should be in. This is ridiculous. The thing that bugs me is I think they they gave the Kentucky win a huge buttload of weight for yeah. Notre Dame, but it was at home. And Kai, Texas A&M just beat Auburn on a neutral. That's a much better win. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I find it. I find it a little ridiculous. Yeah, Jim, uh, the commissioner like cited that exact point directly as like his leading argument for 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 Notre Dame. So you're right. Like we talked about that pre-selection, and he like led with that point as why they were in. It's like I feel like that's a short, narrow, yeah. Yeah. a home assessment. two point win over a two seed is not like that uncommon on the bubble. Like a lot of teams in that bubble area had better wins. Oklahoma beat uh, Baylor on a neutral this week. Like that, that's a better win than the, than the Kentucky one. So. I don't know. It's, it's a little confusing, but let's, let's start with that first round, Matthew. Uh, you can talk the first four game if you want to, or you can take us to any matchup you feel like in that region. I'm um, looking at the bracket now. There's a lot of, a lot of good ones here. Where do you want to go? Is it your Hoosiers, your, your hometown Hoosiers, Mr. Alum, or are you going yeah. somewhere else? Yeah, let's go Hoosiers. Let's a um, lot of chatter behind the scenes with my, uh, my IU affiliates, uh, my, my connections, kind of which they are very extensive, of course. Mm -hmm. Not worried about the opening round draw, but everyone understanding that St. Mary's is a kryptonite matchup, and I think that's an accurate take. I will have the Gales marching on. No, I, I, switched, I switched regions on you. We, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't oh, yeah, that's East. Hoosiers. My fault. Yeah, I want to talk Indiana. Okay. Nope. Well, hey, nope. I got plenty That's of takes. So we'll save Holstrom. Right. Well, Jim, because you start with the, the, uh, the Duke Michigan State, which everyone and their mother knew was coming. Um, but, it, but is it going to happen? Too many loves. That's the I think Michigan State beats Davidson. I think everyone's like an air with this Davidson team. Kind of Michigan State's had some flaws. Um, I think Sparty's going to get it done. And Jim, you talked about this the whole Izzo and March thing. Data does not back that up, like from a gambling lens, just from actual result lens. So don't. If you're going to bet Michigan State, bet it for another reason, not just Izzo in March. Um, and the other coach on the opposite sideline, Kai, the Silver Fox, Bob McKillop, knows what he's doing as well. Yeah, he does. And I wouldn't be surprised if either Michigan State or Davidson beat Duke. I, I know that seems like a bridge too far, but I wouldn't be surprised. I think Texas Tech's going to come out of that little pod. Um, probably, not a, that. probably not a super hot take. I think you're going to see that a lot amongst the talking heads out there. Jim, I want to talk about Memphis, Boise. That is a very mm. intriguing 8-9 matchup, in my opinion. And... Gonzaga, I don't think you want to see Memphis uh, if you're sitting on that one line, even if you are the mighty, mighty Zags. We talked about it on our show today. Memphis is like in the top 10 on Bart Torvik since the, the beginning of February. That's going to be a tough eight seed. Can Memphis get, excuse me, a nine seed? Can they get past Boise, though? Super physical game. I think I'm taking the under already. Yeah, I mean, does either team make a free throw in that game is going to be up for debate. Uh, we have lost Matt. Uh, that's gone. That, that's too bad, Kai, but, you know, we press on. 
Uh, yeah, Boise, Memphis, like it, it, they, they strike me as under teams. Memphis does like to run a little bit. Um, Boise has just played war after war in the Mountain West, the Mountain West tournament in particular. Uh, there's nobody quite as athletic as Memphis in that league, though. Uh, even San Diego State size, their athletes, the way they defend, it's not quite Memphis caliber. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm leaning towards Memphis, Kai, but there is a little, there's a little coaching edge for me there. Leon Rice versus Penny Hardaway. Uh, I, I, I tend to be a Rice boy there. Matt, do you agree? Um, I wonder if Larry Brown is starting to pull some more strings mm. behind the scenes. I think we should consider that very seriously as we've watched this Memphis offense, especially come out of the darkness and really um, to the forefront lately. I'm looking at chalk in a lot of these games. Honestly, I kind of lean Arkansas against Vermont, Jim. I like UConn against Mexico State. The Aggies have had rebounding issues all season, and UConn will punish you in a hurry. Um, and they have guys that they can throw at Teddy Allen. If you keep Teddy Allen in check, I think the uh, the Aggies could be um, in for some hurt, even though we love Chris Chance. I think it's just a tough draw for them. Yeah. If, if like basically they got through the WAC tournament because Teddy Allen is a monster and unguardable in that league. And between Andre Jackson and uh, Tyrese Martin, and even if you like upgrade and you throw Isaiah Whaley at him and, and try to like have him chase right. him a little bit, like the physicality they can throw at Allen is a problem. Uh, Kai, I want to, can we push back on Matt a little on Arkansas, Vermont? Uh, do you, do you agree with that? I mean, look at last year, Colgate got out to a huge lead on Arkansas. Yep. They got worn down in the second half. Mm-hmm. The athleticism concerns got them. I think Vermont has a little more juice than last year's Colgate team. I think this Arkansas team is a little worse than last year's Arkansas team. What do you think of the Catamounts? Can they pull the upset? Uh, Jim, I think they can. I'm less confident in them pulling an upset than I am in Mexico State pulling oh. an upset over UConn. I say that because New Mexico State has – power six athletes on their team. They have former power six players in their team. They have a guy in Teddy Allen that quite literally never misses. He can shoot wherever he wants, could score 30 plus. And my favorite point about this matchup, Jim, UConn's a really stupid team. UConn makes a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I've heard this from you before. They make a lot of dumb, dumb, dumb mistakes. This could be an elite eight team. This could uh, be a team that bows out to New Mexico state. It sucks that New Mexico state and Vermont are kind of in the same uh, pod here. Cause I really do think they're two of the best uh, t- mid-major matchups in, in the bracket. Hey, if you're Vermont, here's just a little, little advice. Colgate was in control until, who is it, Jeff Woodard, little baby hook to push the lead to nine. He does the little man taunt, yeah. and the game is a complete right. runaway. Right. Don't, when, when the don't answer is a bear sleeping, don't poke it. Just keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Humbly and subtly, <laughs> Jim. That's my, uh, yeah, my two If stars. Arkansas is like, oh, we're just playing Vermont, whatever, don't don't right. alert them to the fact that you're awesome. Don't, don't Like you said, don't poke the bear. Uh, right, they to, have it. They certainly have it. Let's go to the bottom half of that that bracket. We did discuss a little bit the Rutgers Notre Dame thing. Uh, Kai, can they beat Alabama? I, the one point I really liked that uh, Sean Miller made is that this is this game's in San Diego, and the winner of Rutgers Notre Dame is going to have to fly all the way out there, basically forty eight hours later, mm-hmm. and deal with the tide who want to get up and down. Um, can either Rutgers or Notre Dame control that tempo, or do you kind of just view that that? disadvantage of travel is too much to overcome. Well, Jim, I think we've seen every single bracket that a play in team makes the what sweet 16. Uh, I think it's been every single year, at least. So it's one of those going to be Rutgers, Notre Dame, quite possibly. I think personally, it's an advantage having a game under your belt heading into the first round. Uh, it, it lessens your chances of being tight, loosens you up. Right. And, and Notre Dame and Rutgers, we already know, uh, can beat very, very good teams. They have six Q1 wins. That's why they're in the bracket for some odd reason. Uh, but in Notre Dame, they beat Duke. They, they proved they can beat a, a top team as well. And Alabama, we know, Matt, has a tendency to be quite Jekyll and Hyde themselves. I would say they are vulnerable in that matchup. Uh, no, Notre Dame beat Kentucky, right? Not Duke? Kentucky, excuse me. Yeah, Kentucky. Same thing. Yeah. They're, they're the same, Matt, right? Come yes. on, all those blue bloods. Yeah, all right. Just replace name, same thing. Yeah, Matt, I've been saying Alabama's kind of a fade team in the tournament because I just don't trust them against a locked-in yeah. opponent that's game-planning for their lack of uh, shooting, a, a team that relies on shooting that doesn't have shooters. I'm bummed that they're playing a team that's going to be on short prep, though. I, I wish it was right. a team that had yeah. four days of prep. The good thing, I guess, for both Rutgers and Notre Dame, the game is a late tip um, on Friday. So, like, I know it's a tough travel and the turnaround is not ideal, but, like, it won't be, like, an early West Coast tip that could, I think, throw a wrench in which you actually look at that as a situational advantage. I think Alabama's one and done. I think they get by Rutgers and Notre Dame, but Texas Tech stops them dead in their tracks. Okay. Just too disciplined defensively. Um, I'm pretty on this Tech team, man. I think this is a brutal region yeah. in general. I think mm-hmm. looking at, especially yes. with Duke, Texas Tech, and Gonzaga as your top three, 
pretty stout. Pretty stout. Yeah, it's a good one. It's not as good as the South, but it's still very good. Uh, there was a question that chat about Colorado State seed gym versus Boise State seed. If you look at the resumes, extremely close. I think Colorado State got the edge, uh, strength of schedule, number one. Number two, they don't have a Q4 loss. That was Boise's kind of undoing. Um, Colorado State, two less losses. Their quality metrics are basically the exact same. So it, it was close. Yep. Yeah. Colorado State swept them, but San Diego State, or excuse me, uh, Boise State had the regular season and conference tournament title. I, I yep. thought maybe that would, they, they should have been on the same seed line. That's my, my yep. perception of it. Um, okay. Yeah. What, what else do we have here? Michigan State, Davidson, we discussed. Um, Kai, do, do you think Duke comes out of that little foursome? Michigan State, Davidson, Fullerton? Yeah, Jim, I think so. Are we not giving credit to Montana State enough here? Do we think I'm backing them first round teaser? I, I think that's an it's an overlook just a bit. Uh, now I think Texas Tech is pretty built to stop what they're do, what they do, especially with Jubrio Bello playing through him. Um, but it's an intriguing matchup nonetheless. I agree. I'll let you cut. Yeah, I mean the big thing, like Montana State's fourth in the country in free throw rate, and Texas Tech, like hey, you just don't get to the rim, much less get there and draw fouls. They are prone to fouling a little bit, but if they're not scoring inside, that's an issue. They're going to need Patterson and Gazelas to hit threes. They both hit a few uh, early in the championship game against Northern Colorado, really loosened up the floor. I think they need that. Battle, against, battle against too. Texas. Yeah, they got some guys who can do it, but you're right. They're going to have to make some shots there. Yep. All right. So let's let's do a quick like Sweet 16, Elite Eight. What do you got here? Uh, Matthew, I'll go to you first. Chalk, I'm sorry. Uh, Gonzaga, UConn. Texas Tech, Duke. Well, technically not chalk with UConn, so that's true. That. Sorry, Arkansas. I got UConn beating you know. Uh, Kai, are, are you are you riding the same way? Oh God, Jim. Oh no. Yeah, I. I'll go Gonzaga, Arkansas, Texas Tech, Duke. I'm gonna go chalk. I go Texas Tech, Gonzaga, Gonzaga. Boom. Okay. Yeah, Gonzaga is making the final four for me. I'm like working backwards at this point. Uh, Texas Tech in the Elite Eight. I, I don't think Duke gets there. Uh, and then that, yeah, that UConn, New Mexico State, Arkansas, Vermont little pot is tough. I am going to not give an answer yet. How about that? Wow. Abstaining. Ah, Interesting. That's, hmm. that's a mat move. It's a mat move. It is a mat move. That that's why I made a, him go first. He didn't, he didn't know it was an option. That's, that's, that's what I'm doing. Uh, page on my right. Like, all right, it's fine. Kai, let's be like the ring and go south because huh. Good job, Jim. Nice. couldn't get to the pass. We're going south. Yeah. Uh, sure. All right. Arizona's bracket, Arizona's region. Uh, number two overall seed. Let's quick do the Kirk Kreese talk. We have to hit it because we don't know if he'll be back. He says he'll be back. He was at least out of his boot for the title game. He was not on crutches anymore. He was hurling his Crocs into the stands after they won. Nice. Standard. Uh, Kai, do you think he'll play? Does it matter if he plays? Especially, like, I assume he'll be back by Sweet 16 weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I, would, I would argue I don't think they can lose to Seton Hall or TCU. So I'm not worried about his absence. How do you feel? I mean, I'm a little bit concerned about TCU. We've seen them almost beat Kansas twice. I, I think TCU definitely has the goods. However, I think Seton Hall is kind of a tough matchup for TCU in the first round. Yeah, size. I uh, yeah, I'm uh, Jim. I'm concerned without Creesa, especially when you get to the U the Houston slash Illinois uh, uh, matchup. That's concerning if you don't have your point guard. And I, I know the other supporting cast is fantastic. Dubellis, Coloco. Mathurin, all those guys, but without a point guard going against two great teams like Houston, Illinois, Matt Houston, I mean, analytically the most underseeded team in the entire bracket, they didn't deserve to be higher than a five seed, but still um, very tough team to play. Yeah. I think that little quadrant is the hardest part of the bracket with uh, UAB, Houston, Illinois, Chattanooga, just brutal. This is the, this brutal, is the toughest brutal. region, by the way. It's like the quadrant of doom. Um, yep. Jim, Arizona, uh, yeah. my Kirk. Oh yeah. You do you read though? Yeah, Phelps. I'm with, sorry. With Kai. Those no, teams. I just want to agree with Kai. I think this region is bananas. Like it's, I wanted it's ridiculous. To, yeah, there's yeah. multiple teams I wanted to pick to the final four, and I'm convinced all facing Arizona. Uh, okay, Matt. Go, no, keep going on that that five, twelve, four, thirteen area. Well, but I was going to pivot quickly back to Arizona. I am not worried about Kirk Creesa. Very impressed when I saw from Benny Mather and Dale and Terry is like the quasi two headed point guard. They're both terrific passers. Um, I think Creesa is important, but this zone it seems too good. So I, I think they're almost like a buy low, like people have kind of forgotten about them because it's been a while since we've seen them dominate against in marquee games. Cause the, the PAC 12 is kind of where your marquee spotlighted games go to die. I think zone is going to come out of this region as yeah. I, Nova was so close for me, but I went Zona. So I agree with you. I feel like uh, I, I'm not that worried about Creesa, but every talking head show I've seen so far 
like the ESPN stuff, every guy, the, both the like Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis had Arizona coming out of the region. So man, oh, I, I thought that would be like a little bit more nothing. hipster. I thought people would buy in on Tennessee after they won the sec, but they haven't. Uh, all right, Kai, let's talk Houston, UAB, Illinois, Chattanooga, uh, because I'm confused there too. Uh, I like all these underdogs. Yeah. UAB was a team I was ready to pick with their depth. Their and predictive yep. rankings are very high. But like you said, they're playing a team that's top five in Ken Palm. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more difficult to, to go that direction. Uh, do you see any upsets happening here? Or the, the favorite's too good. UAB feels a bit erratic, and that can work against a lot of teams. Houston is like the anti-erratic team. You cannot be erratic and frantic yeah. and beat Houston. They're too disciplined. Um, they're too well coached. So I'm worried about UAB in that matchup. I think Chattanooga beats Illinois. And I hate to say that because Illinois is coming off that Loyola loss in tournament. Underwood has been talking nonstop about how he's going to do things differently this tournament. He didn't learn from his mistakes last year. Uh, but unfortunately, they, Matt, they got a matchup that's tough. This team can go toe to toe with them. D'Souza, uh, as, a, as a big man for a mid major, I mean, that's about as best you can get um, going against Coburn. Now, Coburn still has an advantage for sure, but that's still a guy that can almost stand up to him. And look at the Chatt- Chatt- News backcourt, Malachi Smith. John David Baptiste, David John Baptiste, excuse me, arguably the best backcourt in the mid-major land, Matthew. Yeah, I'm torn here, per usual. Looked at UAB, looked at Chattanooga, like those are two teams I am almost certain I will be picking to win a first-round game, but I think the matchups are atrocious. I want to like tread lightly about putting too much stock in the matchup thing because you can sort of tilt every angle back on its head, right? You could also argue UAB can hang with Houston because they have the prerequisite size that allows them. They're actually okay with them like a helter skelter type game like banging bodies up front with how all the dudes that they send at the glass um but still brutal draw for uab and new guy i think they both matter in these specific instances i will have illinois houston both advancing probably have the line there in the sweet 16 yeah houston was a team that i was like i will put them in the sweet 16 and no further like i don't think they're yeah. prone to upset because they, like I look what they did all season they just beat the crap out of everybody yeah. that they were supposed to beat uh, and then, you know, sometimes struggle going up in class. I think the, the win over Memphis today was actually a, a very nice eye opener because they had not yep. beaten like, I think it's a top six or top 50 team really without Sasser and without Mark. Uh, they knocked off SMU at home once, but that's, that's a little less impressive. So being, being able to win wire to wire against the Memphis team, that has been playing really well. That probably sold me on not picking them to get upset by UAB as much as I like them. It's just, how many Jelly Walker threes can he throw in from from thirty feet? That's yeah, if he if he's not hidden, like I, where else do you turn? I mean, that offense, like that's the part no one's talked about. UAB, like yeah, they're awesome, but man, that offense can look really really ugly when well, when Jelly Walker's not hidden. Yep, and Houston is a defense that can make that can make look, offense look very yeah. disgusting. So uh, I haven't I haven't I don't have UAB's defensive rebounding numbers offhand, but again, that's like the thing you have to do to deal with Memphis. Uh, or to deal with Houston. I think middle of the road it's funny yeah. it's like that's a, a common dichotomy like really good offensive rebounding teams are not always good on the other end I, of the court I, as well. I also tend to think that UAB's defensive rebounding numbers in conference play are good I think it's a different story when you talk about Houston, Houston. no one rebounds like them in conference USA that's uh, a whole different animal and we saw Fabian point. White. I mean, how good was Fabian White today? Like we talked about how much he matters he might not 20 even points. play and here he is. right yeah. 29 yeah, he yeah so he's good he matters too Okay, so can either of those teams or any of those teams that are coming out of there beat Arizona Sweet 16? Kai, it sounds like you're kind of unsure based on Crease's status. I think Houston could beat them. Um, I probably won't pick it, but I think they can. Yeah, Illinois is a tough team to figure for me, Matt. Um, let's, you let's... think they – well, I think the, the interesting there is the rematch with Arizona that lingers. Um, or sorry, do you want to finish the bottom half and we'll go back to Elite Eight? at the no we, at, we can do that uh, we can do it now the, the, yeah the that potential matchup it's it's kind of a rematch bracket for arizona they played yeah, at illinois is. they played at tennessee they could end up yep. getting both of those once again mm-hmm. um but yeah all right matt um let's uh, let's pivot to bottom half before we do sweet 16 any elite eight uh here's colorado state team we discussed briefly on their seeding they got michigan who avoids the playing game i thought that was fair Kai like if they're going to be in I think they're maybe a little too good to be in the playing game based on some of the quality metrics that they have going Matt you faded Tennessee a couple years back with Mr. Burns and Colgate does Longwood have a shot are they at all uh, are they all interesting to you against the team that just won the SEC tournament went back and forth on this uh, worth noting that Rick Barnes is one in five against the spread 
since 2016 in the NCAA tournament, not covering by an average of five and a half points a game. He's had some notable stinkers. He's had some notable stinkers in big spots last year. Obviously, the zone completely stymied that offense. Yes. However, I look at the Longwood matchup, and they have like those big physical, we call them the, the all-weight room backcourt. Their guards are just jacked. Just built like linebackers, man. Like, Do you think that could give the little little guards, Zakai Ziegler and Kennedy Chandler, now that they're flimsy, they're, they're why, pretty sturdy too. Why are you too. putting them in quotes? They are little. Because they're shorter though, right? Like, So that's yeah. like, is it actually, does that stuff well for Longwood, or is that... Um, it, it, if Longwood's only real avenue to offense, Kyle, is those guards making plays, I'm not sure if that's what you want to count on against Tennessee. Yep. It's, um, well, I think that game they covered, Matt, Rick Barnes, that was the right state game, right? The Tennessee won by yes, like 30 points. Point. Yep. Yeah. 314 matchup. I'm right. Longwood, state. Woo-hoo, yeah, yeah. Longwood is super athletic. You can't out athlete Tennessee. You just saw Tennessee take care of Kentucky. I mean, that's arguably the most athletic team in the country. Uh, uh, Longwood drew a bad matchup here. I think they would be a real problem for a lot of teams in this, in this tournament. Unfortunately, Tennessee is kind of the one that they're not going to be a problem for. Um, so I think Tennessee gets past there. Uh, I think uh, well, Michigan, can I, one more quick yeah, question on that one, Kai. Uh, yes, of Kentucky course. shot two for 20 from deep against yeah, Tennessee. Yeah. Texas A&M was bricky four for 19 today. Mm. How Fortune. much of that is Tennessee's defense? And then like Longwood, it has, has a lot of lethal shooters. They do. Is that something they can take advantage of against the Tennessee D? Uh, yeah, sure. Of course. I mean, anyone gets hot, it's their tournament. There, there's plenty. Someone's going to come out here unexpectedly. Right. So, uh, it could be a long one. Uh, yeah. Colorado state, Michigan, Kai, we can go there real quick. Um, Dickinson, yeah. maybe a problem. Uh, David Roddy is great, but he is not that big. You're going to have yep. to play Thomas. You're going to have to play Moore's a little bit in this matchup. Um, I just trust Colorado state a lot more right now. The basically players two through eight. Uh, do, do, do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Michigan's going to win, actually, Jim. Um, I mean, they're favored by two and a half. So wow. okay. if, if if gamblers had to do a bracket, it would look a lot differently, right? The 11 is favored over a six seed. Um, you can bitch about that all you want, but the seeds are correct. But Matt, so are you going to pick the six seed upset? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think Michigan's going to win. Um, I love Colorado State, but I think it's Michigan's game. I'm with Kai here, Jim. Um hmm. I, I, yeah, I just think this is a decent matchup for them. And I'm kind of in on Michigan. Like I, you look at their last couple weeks, they haven't, they, their losses have had good moments. And I think things kind of turned quickly and the, the, uh, the margin of victories spiraled, spiraled out of control. I think Michigan's still good, man. I'm, I'm a believer. All right. Here's why you're probably right. Starting February 12th, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. So there's win. win, boom, yep. let's go, go win. win. That's the next one. <laughs> Do for it. it. Yep. I like patterns. Uh, Man, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if uh, having Juwan Howard back did not help them or what. They were up 19 in Indiana, so I want to read too much into that. But Nico Medved is a great game planner, a great coach. Uh, so I, I at least have some interest in Colorado State there. I, that's a game I'll probably be waffling on. Regardless, though, I think Tennessee beats the winner of that game. Uh, I yep. like Tennessee to make a little bit of Agreed. a run here. Matt, are they going to be playing Villanova? Or are they going to yes. be playing Ohio State or Loyola? What do you what do you think? No, Nova gets through that little quadrant of the brackets. I do have Tennessee beating Nova just at first glance. Uh, another rematch, correct? Uh, what happened in that game? I forget what happened in that first meeting this year. Which one? Nova, Tennessee? Nova, Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, Nova won, right? Nova won, right? Yeah, I think. I looked that up. But uh, I think Nova's... They did. I think the... Yeah, Nova, Nova. Thank you, Kai. Good show prep, Matt. They, they, I think they Nova's eighteen. So yeah. yeah, it was a blowout, wasn't it? Like, like thank you. One, one I think Nova oh, gets sorry, them again. Like that's a that's a that's a bad matchup. So I like Nova coming out of that, Jim. That's a regional final. Jared Bush has it correct in the chat. Yeah, it's just like it, the, Villanova's not going to beat themselves. Um, let's can we talk quick Ohio State Loyola because that's another yes. one where Kai we have a lower seed favored. Yep. Um, I, do you think that's justified? I'm I'm pretty low on Ohio State to be honest. The way they yep. limped into the field. The issues they have in the front court, they don't have a lot of great point guard play. Their best creators are freshmen. Yep. Loyal has done this before. Man, I just talked myself into the Ramblers. Did I talk you into it? <laughs> I'm, I'm taking Loyola, Jim. Yep, you're, you're right. They're favored 10 over 7 again, and some people might see that and scratch their heads, but I think they should be. They're going to have a great game plan for EJ Liddell. Um, they're going to make his life miserable. We've seen it before under Porter Moser coach teams. That Drew Valentine is not Porter Moser, but he came up under Moser. They played the exact same style. And every single person on, on, on Loyola, Matt, is old. They're all senior, senior plus. <laughs> Bunch of adults. Super experienced. So most, of these guys, most of these guys beat Illinois last year. Um, so I, I really like this team. Jim's right. Brandon's a freshman. He's, he's excellent. But he's just a freshman. I think Liddell's going to uh, be well game planned for. If Ohio State was healthy, 
I'm looking to back the Bucks because I, I want to ride with my guy EJ Liddell till uh, till his college career comes to a close. Which True. I will. Kyle Young's will, important too if he's hurt. Kyle Young said key. This team's been banged up badly, like really badly. So they're just they're walking wounded. It feels like against Loyola, who looks like a well-oiled machine coming out of that Valley tournament, would not want to get in the way of that team. Yeah, I, I'll have Villanova in the Elite Eight out of this group. Uh, I think Loyola can give them a solid game, um, but it's it's the Wildcats are too tough. They don't beat themselves just repeatedly. It's like a root canal. You're, you're just you just got to deal with them every single possession. Uh, okay, so I, I gave that away, but Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight. Let's hit those real quick. Uh, Kai, who do you have sweet 16 and elite eight in this region? Uh, Jim, I'm going to go with Arizona, Houston. I'm going to go with Tennessee and Villanova. I'm going to take Villanova to the final four, which I assume is not going to be a popular pick. I assume we'll take Tennessee or Arizona. I I think it won't be. So, yeah. I'll go with Nova. Funny, Ron in the chat saying Big Ten got destroyed last year. This should be no different. Michigan consistently bad. Michigan was the only team that did well last year in the Big Ten, actually, Ron. Michigan's done very well under <laughs> Jawan Howard. Wow, Chir- a chirpy <laughs> tone from Kai there. Uh, I've had half a Toretto. Uh, I think Michigan boy- could beat Tennessee, could make the Sweet 16. But I'll go Kai, with both of them, Kai, I, don't I think kind anyone, of agree with Kai. Man. I don't think anyone knows what a Toretto is. Can you educate them? That's a Corona. Corona. corona yeah. Can't really see it because my background, but. Yeah. Toretto takes are the right takes. I'm Dominic, Dominic might be talking. Toretto from Fast and the Furious. That's the connection. Toretto. Yeah. That's. I just want to make sure everybody follows. That's uh, right. But Matt, you agree? Villanova Final Four. He's talking me into. Uh, well, he's talking me into the whole Michigan Sweet Sixteen, maybe. But but like, put that aside. It's Arizona versus Illinois. Arizona Elite Eight, and then I have uh, Nova Tennessee. I have Nova Perfect. beating Tennessee, and I have Arizona beating Villanova. So chalky, chalky, chalk again. Um, yeah, I, I have Arizona over Villanova as well. The difference, I, I have Houston Sweet 16. I just like, I have a hard time seeing that team get upset. Granted, they almost did last year uh, against Rutgers, but they came back. Uh, and I'll trust them over Illinois, who's got the Curbelo erraticness that just makes me a little too nervous about them down the stretch. Yeah. Boy, every pass is fancy, Jim, with Andre Curbelo. And that's looking. Made it. Never the, made a normal the, chest yeah. pass in his life. Never the done. one the one bounce pass he threw uh, <clears throat> against Indiana was like unbelievable. But then oh, yeah. two possessions later, he just like handed the ball to, to the Hooters. Right. So right. if he doesn't have it, Underwood needs to play him like 10 minutes tops. Like there needs to be a very, very tight leash. And I think there will be the stakes are, you know, you lose and the, the whole season kind of ends. So right. I, I don't think he's going to give him any sort of rope at all. Yep. Uh, all right, let's go to the Midwest. Before we do a reminder, this is the Field of 68's Selection Sunday special. We've got a Bracket Fanatics special going on in the description for this YouTube video. Uh, enter the pool, potentially win $500. You're going to be in there with people like Archie Miller, Sean Miller, Jeff Goodman, Rob Doster, and us. Yay, we got to fill out brackets, boys. Whoops, yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, we're not in there yet. It's, it's early. We're still sorting out our takes. Uh, but okay, let's get back to it. The Midwest led by Kansas, of course. Midwest. This is, to me, Kai, the region where I don't really want to pick anyone to the Final Four, which is <laughs> making me look down further down the line. I'm not enthused by Auburn. Kansas did play a lot better late. I'll give it's them Kansas. that. It's Kansas. Oh, tell, tell us why, Matt. Wow, you're just... You're skipping. You're reading the, the last Their draw is a bunch of first. cupcakes. A bunch of cupcakes. <laughs> That's the spoiler right there. I mean, they're paired with... Sorry, I, maybe Iowa's all the way legit. I, I've finally given them the credit they deserve. Um but relative to you look at Houston, Illinois in the South, you look at Arkansas, um, UConn in the West. I just may really have an Arkansas and then UCLA, the weather playing right now and St. Mary's in the East relative to those other possibilities, Kansas getting Iowa. And then obviously Providence who we're all in agreement is going to lose to the Jack Bunnies, Kai, right? We can all just pencil that in. Yes. It's going to be such a like um, heavy pick. underdog. 80% take, but... people picking on it. Yep. I love it. Yes. It's going to happen. It wrong. Doesn't make it wrong. South Dakota State. I don't think they've gotten past the first round in no ever. Right. Otzelberger never yeah, did. Donald I don't think got there. Maggie yeah. ever did. I, I the year. Yeah, they get it done. Um, Jim, but Jim, I agree with Matt. This is a really good draw for Kansas. Um, I, I, I think I don't know if San Diego State or Creighton puts up a fight. Richmond is not a gimme for mm-hmm. Iona. For, excuse me for Iowa. Going to be a really high scoring game. Be a lot of offense in that one. Um, but yeah, I, I think Kansas kind of cruises to lead eight here. We can talk about the bottom half in a bit, but it's KU's. I mean, I, if we get the South Dakota state win, what's the total in Iowa, South Dakota state? Oh, baby. One sixty five. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I said one seventy ish <laughs> on Twitter. I, I think it, yeah, it's going to be monstrous. They, they're going to want to go up and down this. So this is one where I wanted to pick Iowa over Kansas and have them in the elite eight. And then, okay, I'll find somebody on the bottom of the bracket to go to the final four. 
but I don't really trust Wisconsin. I don't really trust Auburn. Yep. Agreed. So I'm having a hard time with this one. Uh, Matt, before we, before we get to too high level on this, on this one, let's, let, me, let me zoom in to that eight, nine matchup quick. You think this is a soft path we'll for Kansas. We've got San Diego state. We've got Creighton, two great defensive teams, two teams that are awesome at the rim. Mensa yep. and Kalkbrenner are just going to mm-hmm. like run into each other, like two battering Rams smashing into each other at the rim. Lowish total. Uh, who do you see coming out of that one between uh, those two Dutcher and McDermott, a great coaching matchup. I feel like I've disrespected Creighton recently too. I am looking to fade them coming off the the 30 point demo. I know they just played against Villanova, but the 30 point demolition of Providence, they played immensely well in that Big East tournament. To me, this is like the movable object meets the movable object. I just think San Diego State's object slightly more movable. Kai, how's that for a very poetic, eloquent way to break down how I see this? Hmm. Um, I'll disagree. I'll disagree. I think okay. defense is really, really, really important in the NCAA Bay tournament. Extremely important. I think San Diego State has a puncher's chance at Kansas. Oh, oh I, hate, okay. I like that take too. I like Toretto takes Kai. Yeah, I know he's, just he's better than us, Matt. He's better than us. We got to We got to get this man. I know. That's fine. We have what, one point five regions to catch up, Jim. We got time. We'll be all right, Matt. Here's here's what I'll say. You're you're saying like they're both immovable objects. This is like uh, San Diego State was born in the dark. Like Creighton just <laughs> the, adopted the, the dark. I was yeah. molded by it. Yeah, Creighton, exactly. Creighton just decided to be a defensive team this year. That's that's a new identity for them. Whereas San Diego State has lived in this identity for years and years and years. Uh, I think they have the best shot maker late in the game too with Matt Bradley. So I will likely have the Aztecs coming out of that one. Yeah, Kai, I agree. I think they could give up, uh, put up a fight with Kansas. I, it's just tough. Kansas playing so much better late in the year in the, in the big 12 tournament spooked me a little, I was like ready to have them out early, but uh, they stepped up their game. All right. 5, 12, 4, 13. You mentioned, we mentioned the Jackrabbits. Uh, Matt, do you think you said you're, you're kind of turning around on Iowa that you think they're legit. You were out, you were loving the itsy bitsy spiders run through the a 10 tournament. Can they give Iowa a game? Yeah, I will be betting Richmond here. I am all in on the arachnids right now. Um, I don't think they win. I think Iowa wins. So just from a bracket perspective, I love Iowa advancing and then playing South Dakota State in what figures to be 110 to 95 shootout of just pure basketball bliss. Yeah, we could we could have an SDSU versus SDSU game if we get a couple upsets here. The That'd real SDSU. Yeah, who, who's Ooh, the real? I like that. Uh, Kai, you, uh, Iowa to, to the Sweet 16 there, are you, you going something bolder? Yeah, I'm taking Iowa to Sweet 16. But it would be Fran McCaffrey's very first Sweet 16. So – we're going against precedence here, guys, twice. Number one, South Dakota State being Providence. Number two, Iowa going to the Sweet 16. I don't like doing unprecedented things. But, Jim, last year we did see Roy Williams lose his very first ever first-round game. So yeah. things can happen in the NCAA tournament. Can I, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go just a quick devil's advocate on Providence, South Dakota State. Okay. I, unless South Dakota State like puts him away, I just, I just think Providence has that juice, man. Late in the game, yeah, they, they do. play they do. so many close games. Bynum and Durham are great at the end. Nate Watson, I, Nate Watson will grab a big offensive rebound late in this game and get a putback and probably an end one. And he will scream to the crowd and I'll be like, oh, yep, here we go again. So I, I'm toying with really going against the grain there. If, if there's a couple trends there of, of their winning the close games in South Dakota State, this South Dakota State not getting out of the first round. Yeah, definitely. Um, that I'm, I'm worried about the trendy pick. So I, I'll think longer and harder about that. But for now, I have the Jackrabbits out of there. Uh, let's go bottom half. LSU, Iowa State, Wisconsin, Colgate. I said to you guys before the show, I think this is the softest group of four in the entire yeah. bracket. Um, the six seed just fired their coach. The 11 <laughs> seed has had like three of their program's worst offensive performances in the past 25 years over the past month and a half. That's how bad they've been. Uh, Wisconsin's underrated or, or I guess overseeded per predictive metrics and has potential ankle injury with their star. So Matt, talk me out of Colgate going to the nope. sweet 16. The Raiders, Jim, I think this is their year. Um, okay. We just you, need to follow yeah. the Johnny. No, I'm sorry. I won't go that far, but I'm very tempted to take them because the Johnny Davis ankle injury is very real. I mean, our overlord, Jeff Goodman has correctly dubbed that how different this team is with and without him. Um, we saw how vulnerable just recently they were without him. And Colgate is not a team that's going to be out athleted, right? That was sort of the bugaboo against Arkansas. Once Arkansas down with the pressure last year, Colgate was completely helpless. Wisconsin doesn't have that gear to turn into overdrive if Colgate starts off getting hot. And my God, can they hit shots when they're going? Um, that that's offense the, yeah. is pristine and they can bury you. And it was, again, Wisconsin doesn't have that spurtability. 
that pick that, Suey had. That was the, the first thing I was like, okay, if they're playing a team that can't out athlete them, they can hang, man. They can hang. I, yep. I will <laughs> likely pick Colgate here, Kai. I think that'll be one of my little little upset picks. But that means I have to pick either them, the Sweet 16, or LSU, Iowa State. And I have no desire to do that with any of them. It, it, I feel backed into a corner by the bracket, and I don't yeah. like it. Tell me what to do, Toretto takes. Uh, well, I'm taking Wisconsin, guys. Johnny Davis is fine. He's going to be fine. He played 34 minutes against Michigan State. I know he didn't he have a great bad, game. though. Look terrible. He had a bad game. Yeah. He guys have bad games. Come Three on. for 19, but is that a bad game, or is that a, he had no lift in his ankle? Yeah. He's a star. Wisconsin is an experienced team with experienced guards. I think they'll be fine in this game against Colgate, guys. Um, now, the next <laughs> the next match. Hey, it's up, also in Milwaukee, too. Packers fan 2004 yeah, pointing Milwaukee. out. So. That, that is pretty big. Um, next matchup, I am not scared. I think Iowa State's going to beat LSU because LSU is run by Nickelberry now, which uh, he was at Howard for 10 years. Tell me how he did. Um, I, I think Wisconsin's going to beat Iowa State in, in the second round. Can I can I uh, quick devil's advocate that one, Kai, too, just for fun? Yes, to be said. yes of course. Uh, was it three years ago that Will Wade also did not coach in the NCAA tournament? And I think we all like immediately faded them and they went to the Sweet 16 with Tremont Waters. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, oh, okay. Well, I guess some maybe guy named just, Steve Fisher, I think Jim took over at Michigan back in the early 90s and did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Uh, but yeah, I, I think those are purely anecdotal examples and they are not indicative of the fact that you just automatically have to assume they're going to get better without Wade. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a Nickelberry truster as well. The Howard teams he coached were bad, bad, bad. Yes. So, uh, all right. Uh, yeah. I, you know what? I'm going to pick Colgate to the sweet 16. Why not? Let's get wow. wild. Has a 14 ever made it Davidson. Is that them? No, uh, I don't know. I'm sure someone has 15, 15, almost 15 got has, but 14s, by the way, I think I think Data. threes win it like out. close to ninety percent of the time. So you got to be really sure if you want a fourteen seed guess. Just I'm super thought. sure, Kai. No, you know what? It, it, Wisconsin's the obviously the safe pick. Um, we'll see if I come around. Well, now it's I, gonna. I just, well, now it's gonna happen, Jim. Gosh, that damn. little group. That little group has me so curious, hunting for <laughs> a, a an upset. I'm, I'm, yeah. I probably will do it. Okay, right, I'm let's taking go clones. Half. I'm taking clones, Jimmy. Wow. Hey, okay. kind of an Iowa me, State. Tell me, uh, tell me why. Why are you not worried about their offense? I just I'm ignoring the last three games. I'm going to chalk it up to like Big Twelve defenses. I'm going to selectively move the goalposts in my analysis to conveniently fit my narrative of why I think Iowa State's going to win in this region. You know why that's fair? Look how well they did in the non-conference. They right. were they're out of Big Twelve fun. murders row gauntlets. Like, oh yeah, we'll start making shots again. But hey, Milwaukee Jim, um, that will be a very strong. There will be a very strong Iowa State contingent in the neighborhood. That one too. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of Milwaukee uh, clone. Mm-hmm. That that connection is very real. We're, yep. we're okay. taking the under in this game, boys. LSU, Iowa State. Neither team plays offense. Yes. So I kind of agree with under. that. The in tempo under. will be like a little high, but the, the, the amount yes. of turnovers and bricks, I think, will certainly make up for the it. The efficiency will bring it down, yeah. Uh, okay, right. USC, Miami, Auburn, Jacksonville State, very bottom. Auburn, a team that I think a lot of people don't trust earlier in this uh, Field of 68 show. Miami was getting some love to go on a run because I don't think anyone trusts USC either. <clears throat> Kai, is that crazy? Uh, do you trust Auburn enough to get to the Sweet 16? What, what, what are you thinking about this little pod? Oh, I definitely trust Auburn, Jim. I love Auburn. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Huh. I love Auburn. Wow. Guys, don't, don't listen to the road Auburn narrative. Stop. This is a really okay. good team. That's fair. I'm not it's a really good team. They're not I playing road make, games. That's true. I, I think they can make the Final Four. I think Kansas will, but I think they go to the Elite Eight. Uh, USC is going to beat Miami. I, I've heard people say Miami's going to win. No, Matt, there's a huge advantage for USC inside in this game. Miami has nobody, nobody to battle USC on the boards. Look at those rebounding splits. USC. Matt, hit him with, the, hit him USC, with the infield the data, too. I hate USC, by the way. I'm taking USC. Toretto, Toretto takes is literally on fire right now. Um, <laughs> we call him Andy Covershim for a reason. Mr. Enfield, 7-1 and one in the NCAA tournament since right. 2016 with a cover margin of 6.9 points a game. So, yeah, I don't know nice if that's just – Last year, that's just circumstantial, but uh, mostly, well, Florida Gulf Coast. It's right. spread over a few. No, it doesn't include Florida Gulf. That's just oh, USC, actually. So, uh, right, and you exclude Florida Gulf Coast. That was probably what three or four covers in there. Yeah, he covered against yep. our darlings SMU a few years back. Like, yeah, he, twenty point been? comeback. Ugh, yep. Burn it. Yeah, that that was hurt. But anyway, I, I'm with Kai. I think USC beats Miami. I don't love Auburn as much as Kai does, but I think they have a very very easy draw. Um, like potentially so potentially a walk to the Elite Eight if those guards continue to or sorry stop playing like the erratic um, Jekyll and Hyde dudes that they've been lately, they kind of turn back the clock. Then I think they walked the, to the elite. Yeah. Johnson for, 0 for 14 last game. Yeah. 
let's make a shot. Like, let, let's get just a stick back, something. We got to get something. <laughs> yeah, a little, we, we need a hold. little confidence. Yeah. Okay. So, do you both, you both <sighs> have Kansas out of there? Yeah, I do. Final okay. Four. My final four. And Jim, I'm with you. I think I, your hesitancy toward the Jayhawks, I finally come to that side of the aisle if there's this in this hypothetical debate. So, um, w- winning the Big 12 title finally got you to my side of the aisle here. Well, like, I think I've seen the same things that you've talked about emerge. Like, which just, okay. Kansas doesn't give us the same confidence that maybe other Kansas teams in years past have. Um, David McCormick not being 100%, Mitch Lightfoot now recently injured, their front court, like, they might have to play a lot more small ball, which actually could be good for I mean, that could be a good thing with Remy Martin. He's starting to kind of ease back in. Who knows? But you know, it's more of a draw pick, kind, not a I like Kansas pick. I, Auburn, worst two seed in a decade. What is that take in the chat? Yeah, I'm right. not on board with that. I think Kai, I'm, I'm kind of. I think that. I'm going to end up. I, I'm not like I wasn't excited about it. Wasn't planning Bad on take. it, but because of the draw, I think I'm going to have Auburn in the Final Four. I think I am going to go Iowa over Kansas to the Elite Eight, and I will probably be ruining the day that I trusted Fran McCaffrey, Mister No Second Weekends. Mm-hmm. I just think this team is different, man. I, I like watching them play. Yeah, I think it is the, different. The small ball stuff they can do with the Murrays at the four and the five makes them a lot more versatile defensively. Tony Perkins is awesome. Like, I, I don't know if he, he probably doesn't get the love he deserves, but he gives them that athletic wing that can match up with Solid. different types of guys they haven't really had in the past. I think they can sneak past Kansas. Kansas fans are going to be like, what are we playing the Morris twins with, with the Murrays going out there? They're actually a, on nice. Ken Palm site. They have the similarity scores and, and Keegan Murray is similar to Marcus. Morris. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, there are times where I like where I confuse them, but uh, Jim, yeah, I, I don't know. This is tough. It's Kansas just by default for me. Okay. So I guess where I landed is Kansas, South you know, Iowa, Kansas, Iowa, Colgate, Auburn. And then I have Auburn over Iowa to go to the final four. Boy, that's fun, huh? Wow. It is, Jim. Uh, I'm chalk. Kansas over Auburn. Okay. Matt, you said you're, you're fully chalk? Kansas, Iowa, Iowa State. Hmm. And Auburn. I can't wait till Kai's the only one that picks Wisconsin. And he's just laughing at us when they're like, they were, they played in Milwaukee, you idiots. Why did you not pick them? It's like when I bet my uh, mortgage on American, what, like 2016 or 2015. I'm like, guys, our, the best Matt, bet. That was first our round. first NCAA tournament in Vegas bet. That's right. Oh my gosh. We both, we both lost, lost by 40 the, points. One game was never competitive. I'm it's trying to check, check myself. Uh, let's see. Two coaches in this region, right, have made the final four Bill Self and Bruce Pearl. That sounds pretty good to me. I'll take, I'll take that matchup. Yeah. Lead eight. That's true. Yep. Pearl's done it before. Uh, yeah, I'll go, like I said, Auburn over Iowa. Sorry, Kansas. I've been looking. Maybe I shouldn't be too as skeptical as I've been, but I am. Okay, so hey, where uh, do we... Jim, I'm glad that you went to bat for Iowa. Thank you. I think we needed that. As an organization that's been excessively harsh on Iowa historically, I think it's good that we have some I representation in the group. So I appreciate you doing that. Doing that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, who are we if we can't uh, take in new information, change our Open-minded. minds, and, and learn from it? Minded. Yeah. I was a team that has fully changed my mind this year. Uh, okay. Let's, let's take a little more bigger picture look. And then to close out, I, we might dive into a couple extra matchups more. Oh, well, let's, let's go East. That's a better idea. How's that? Uh, East, East region, Baylor at the top, Kentucky down at the bottom of the two seed. Uh, where do we start? We'll start Matt. You know what? We almost started with your Hoosiers. Let's start with them. They're playing in the yep. playing game against Wyoming. A, are you surprised that your Hoosiers are in a playing game? And B, do they win one? Yeah, I thought we should have avoided that, right? I guess the Richmond win was basically the nail on the like, – were you brought on the last cut line or what was the official confirmation? Maybe. Uh, I, okay. I, I will also say Goodman floated the idea that they, they wanted a big name in the first four. So. And Dane, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, look at some of these other slottings in the field. I can tell the committee was up to their puppeteering ways. Um, <laughs> Kai, I think Indiana <laughs> takes care of Wyoming fairly – not easily, but I don't feel – worried as an IU fan drawing my own thing. Um, and I can't put a good finger on it matchup wise. Why? I am very worried about the St. Mary's matchup that could be living next round though. Um, because I think the, yeah. the Gales height is sort of negates how Indiana plays. And I, I think Randy Bennett has a very simple thing to do. It's like, how do you shut down Xavier Johnson and how do you collapse people on Trey Jackson Davis? You have two things to do. He'll solve those riddles and St. Mary's will look like the better team if they play. Uh, I don't, yeah. So that's my thing about uh, playing game making the Sweet 16. It's not going to be here because St. Mary's is not going to lose. To, you, Stole you know, my take. Sense. This freaking Toretto guy just can't he's stop. On, Jimmy's on a fire. Absolutely. This on is fire. ridiculous. Why are we on air if he's just got all the good takes? I'm going to rip St. my Mary's notes. Rocks. I'm going to torch him. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're uh, amazing. In, Indiana, Wyoming, it's uh, that'll be interesting, Matt. I think there's I, a coaching yeah. edge for Wyoming. Yeah, right I think opinion. that's I think that's less a pushover than you're making it. Um, obviously, the, he, the matchup's weird, but who's guarding Maldonado? Yeah, and Ek on TJD, kind of love it. Yeah, no, he's love gonna, it. He's TJD's been phenomenal. Like TJD lately has been great. Like I think IU's actually done a little bit better job of creating some space around him, and when he has like the room to operate, he can slither, and his both hand finishes are delectable. Matt, I'm gonna. Do you put, do you, put, ahead, do you put Ray Thompson on Maldonado? Is that how you work this? Yeah, I think he's nimble enough to like yes. step away and guard on the perimeter. Like I've, if you make him a jump shooter, that's fine with me. It's better than the whole back down thing. So you eliminate the back down component. Yep, I'm with you, Jim. And you have TJD to slot against uh, EK. So I like the IU lean there. I do. I'm, I'm going to change the line to Indiana, guys, because on, EK's, EK's going to get in foul trouble immediately. And he's going to get off the floor. He won't play very much in this game. Yeah, that's kind of he kind of lives in foul trouble, and both he and Maldonado are uh, exposed. They they both get like two offensive fouls a game from people flopping when they're guarding them in the post, so that is a concern. Uh, but Matt, I think St. Mary's rolls either team, just like Kai. Yeah, I, I, I don't say. think a playing winner. I think they're drawn dead against the Gales, a uh, better rested St. Mary's team. Uh, I have St. Mary's going pretty far. I'm not going to tell you exactly how far. I do too. Uh, Baylor, North Carolina, Marquette up there. And, of course, Norfolk State, Kai, we have to give a quick nod as a team that has beaten our Mizzou Tigers in the first round in a big they upset. Did. Can they beat Baylor, Kai? No, Jim, but okay. as we talked about, we're going to be in Vegas uh, for this game. We're going to take the Norfolk State Spartans first to 15, and we're going to make money, aren't we, Jim? That we will. They owe us some I'm operations money for ruining our 2012. That's right. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, North Carolina on the previous show was getting a lot of love for – the potential to beat Baylor guys with the, the way they played against Duke Baylor's limitations without JTT without crier, Matt, are you buying that? And does North Carolina even get by Marquette? Cause I'm saying this is two straight years where North Carolina loses to a Wisconsin team in an eight, nine game. I think Marquette wins in the, uh, the Dawson Garcia bowl, Kai, your boy at the epicenter of this one. Yeah. Um, Too bad he can't play. We also have the uh, Dylan Painter Bowl, by the way, Villanova, Delaware. We did not touch on that, but anyway, back to and this the matchup. Foster lawyer bowl, Matt, Foster lawyer bar. It's ah, love it. Again, committee, yo-yoing behind the scenes, folks. Don't forget that. Jim, I've been a Baylor believer. People have hopped off the train because they've not played well. A um, couple of games down the stretch here, they are shorthanded, but they are healthy enough. And I like the core seven, basically, they have intact right now. I have Baylor Sweet 16, so I'm trusting the Bears. Yeah, I have yeah, Sweet 16, yeah. too. I think Marquette beats North Carolina as an underdog and then covers mm-hmm. against Baylor, but does not win. I love Shaka as a dog, man. That's, that's what he's better at. He's not a – yes. Not a, yeah. not a like get his guys up to beat a bad team type of dude. Uh, so what do you, Kai, do you think Baylor sweet 16 as well? Are you with us? Yes. Yes. Baylor sweet 16. Um, Marquette as a dog is interesting, Jim, that press could give UNC trouble. Um, Caleb love Davis handling the ball. That, that press is no joke. Gave Illinois fits. I think yep. do the same for UNC. Yep. Uh, all right. UCLA Akron though. Do, does UCLA, I, I think they're getting a ton of love to go Sweet 16 and potentially even go Elite Eight or farther because people view uh, Baylor as a vulnerable one seed. Hmm. Matt, St. Mary's, Elite Eight, talk me out of it. Uh, not going to. Oh. Here's the one point I will offer in UCLA's favor because I did give them a, good, a pretty good look to go Sweet 16. Uh, like the Miles Johnson presence up front, I, I think he just means so much for this team. They've had their other key cogs a little bit healthier, play better. Tiger Campbell most recently. Um, Johnny Juzang, along with the emergence of Hakez. UCLA does feel like a team getting slept on. I hope they beat Akron by 35 points and then some. Um, <laughs> and I think they will too. So I think they'll have a resounding open round statement. But man, the St. Mary's root canal around a 32 matchup will not be fun if that's what pans out. Here's my worry, Kai. I'll, I'll kick it to you about St. Mary's UCLA is that I think Randy Bennett's defenses are best at making you take tough shots. And mm-hmm. UCLA is like, that's what we do. We, yeah, we, we can make whether those. you make us Definitely. take them or not. We're gonna take tough jumpers, and they're good at making them. So as much as I, I like, I'm probably like I said, I'm gonna have St. Mary's in the Elite Eight most likely. Uh, I'm hesitant a little bit because I think UCLA's shot making ability against that defense is a, a worthy worry. How do you see it? Yeah, I, so I think Akron could be the up the upset pick that nobody picks. Um, I like this take. Oh too. <laughs> no! This is, this is no. He was perfect. He, was, so he, he had a perfect game through seven. Now he's getting off the base knock. You so no, no. I I think I think the like the, against the grain upset that no yeah. one no, no one, one even in, considers. No, I one like that narrative. Akron. It ain't happening. No one's taking Akron. 
I, right, I, no I, I didn't think Akron would, would beat Buffalo or Toledo or Kent State, and they beat them all. I know they're not UCLA, but they're well coached. Um, I, I think it can happen. And UCLA, remember, should have lost last year to Michigan State. Should have never been a Final Four team. What do they look like this year if they ever made the Final Four? What are their preseason expectations? It's not even close to the same thing. Not saying it's going to happen, but intrigued. I think St. Mary's gets the Sweet 16 out of there. Boom. Love it. Okay, bottom half. The other one that's getting a ton of love, and it's not a surprise after they just ran through the ACC, is Virginia Tech over both Texas and possibly even Purdue. Uh, they, I believe they have flipped to a favorite already in, in early betting markets against Texas. People are giving a lot of love to the Hokies. But, Kai, this reminds me of last year when a little old guy named Chris Beard was a six seed facing off a trendy 11 in Utah State, and they kind of just manhandled him. Yep. Uh, is, that, is that how you see this one happening? I think Virginia Tech's going to beat them. Um, are they favored? They, I think they are. Uh, yeah, actually, I think Texas at minus one, one pick, pick right now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, right on it's kind of all I, over the pick them. I think Virginia Tech wins. Um, Virginia Tech, I think, has a real issue with legit size. I thought you could give them huge issues. They didn't. Texas has size, but top end size, not really. Christian Bishop's playing the five mostly for them. DC doesn't play for whatever reason. I think Virginia Tech can hang. Um, Texas has never looked cohesive this entire season um and and virginia tech can get white hot i like betting on white hot teams in, in the tournament i lean texas for some stupid reason and i can't quite shake the taste from my mouth but it doesn't doesn't taste good kai um i i'm, I'm gonna take texas here i'm gonna look the other way and i feel like i'm gonna regret it very badly in a All close right. tight game where you think like chris beard and his stellar tournament track record would have a big edge i think that's negated completely by mike young who has the team I actually trust more to execute in late game situations. If it's like a two or three possession game, final three minutes. Um, all that said, I still, my gut scream in Texas and I hate it. Yeah. It, Matt, have- that's, that, that's kind of like the Akron thing where I think everybody's really liking Virginia tech right now. You can kind of zag a little bit with Texas when everybody's zigging. Uh, I think Purdue smashes the Yale. I'm just gonna say that quick. We're running, we're running short on time. So I don't want to like belabor this, but real quick, we got to talk Murray state, San Francisco. Hose job. It's a shame they're playing. Just just flip San Francisco and Miami. Boom. Everybody's happy. Like 7-10, much better matchup there. Uh, Decent path for Kentucky. They once again have the darling 7 seed, just like 2019 when they had to take down Wofford. I am thinking about whoever wins Kentucky-Murray State. Uh, I think Murray State does get out of there, potentially going to the Final Four uh, because I'm not in love with the top half of the bracket. Mm. I don't know. I don't hate this. We're fast forwarding quick though, uh, because like I said, we're, we're gonna have to get final four picks and champ picks in. Uh, Matt, give me your sweet 16 and elite eight. I'll, I'll go first. Like okay. I said, I have Baylor St. Mary's, uh, and then I have, I, I'm, I'm going with the, the trendy pick here Virginia Tech and Kentucky, I guess. Really thought about Murray State, uh, but then I will have Kentucky over St. Mary's in the elite eight in Philadelphia uh, to go to the final four. Wow. What do you Love have, it. Matthew? Yep, Baylor St. Mary's. I will take Baylor there, Jim, and I'm gonna regret it because it seems like everyone's gonna have St. Mary's going to be 16, maybe even Elite Eight. And I don't want to be the guy that's behind the train on that on that Gales run. It sounds like a lot of fun to be a part of. I will take Purdue and I will take Kentucky. Um, and I have Kentucky advancing past Purdue versus Baylor and then Kentucky final four. Love the idea of Oscar against those big men. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kai, who do you have? I'm saying Kentucky to the final four. I agree. It's a shame. We got Murray, San Francisco. It's kind of like Houston UAB. You think they would just stop pairing up mid majors. That sucks. Um, I think Murray state can beat Kentucky. I think they're definitely beating San Francisco. I've already bet it. Um, and, and I think Kentucky Ooh. gets to the final four. That's it's coming from a couple of fellows. That and love I love San the Francisco. Dons, but I think yep. Murray's going to handle it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. So recap final four. I have Gonzaga, Arizona, Auburn and Kentucky. Cool. A couple of sec squads there. Uh, who do you have, Kai? Uh, I got Kentucky. I got Gonzaga. I got Villanova. And I got Kansas. Okay. Matthew? Gonzaga, Zona, Kansas, and UK. So, Blue Blood Central for me. Yeah, I mean, w- w- you and I are very similar. I think the Auburn, Kansas is the only one we differ. Uh, so, we all talked about how we thought the West region was kind of tough, but we all ended up with Gonzaga there. Kai, let's do title picks. Mm. Um, I know we, we had a midseason pod on three man weave where we did our, our updated midseason title picks. Now we have a real bracket. Where do you stand now that we have this? It's always been Gonzaga, Jim. 
Gonzaga's going to win the title. Been, yeah. Mark Few finally comes home. We get these idiots to shut up about how they never won a title. Gonzaga. Yeah. Zigzag, Jim. There it is. All right. Uh, I'm going I'm going Apprentice Beats Master, fellas. I, I, oh, I, I switched, in on this angle. I switched to it at in wow. December on our pod. Arizona over Gonzaga. Huh. Huh, huh, um, huh. I, I cannot even fathom the narratives that are going to evolve from that about Mark Few and like, oh, Tommy Lloyd taught him everything he, he actually knew. It's, <laughs> oh, it's going to be, gonna be terrible. It's going to be terrible. But oh, assuming Creesa is back for the Sweet 16 weekend, I think Arizona is viable to win that title. Very impressed with their size. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, tell, Kai, quick uh, explanation on why the Zags, we, we can get out of here in like a minute or two. They've been the best team all season. They're still the best team. That's why they're going to win. All right. Matthew, do you feel the same way? Yeah, the the Chet Holmgren thing was real. I know St. Mary's kind of maybe drew up a decent playbook to, to stop him, but just with the weapons they have, almost feel like they may have gotten bored down the stretch, to be honest. So I think the tournament reinvigorates them. We see the non-con version. Yeah. I, so the Arizona thing, yeah, it's their size. Uh, and I think they can do some things that bother Gonzaga. Should we actually get that matchup? Um, some of the, the Dale and Terry and Benedict Matherin off the dribble. It will be weird to see those two teams like get up and down against each other since they're both looking for quick buckets, easy buckets over and over again. They're mirror images of each other. Uh, they both play two true bigs that can score inside. Uh, although Chet Holmgren's floor spacing is one unique aspect of that matchup yes, that is. I would be concerned about. Uh, all right. I believe that is it, fellas. Thank you for joining us, joining me. Thank you to Dagan behind the scenes. Uh, a hat tip, of course, to Bet Rivers. And remember, we've got John Fanta coming up next. He is with Ashton Gibbs. He is with Kevin Sweeney. Former Iowa State coach Steve Prohm is going to give you some great insights to coaching in the tournament. That's going to be wonderful. And remember the, the bracket group at uh, Bracket Fanatics. That is in the description for this video. Be sure to check that out. Join. You can win some money. Uh, we have another show coming that we're, we're recording on Tuesday. We'll have our, our normal best bet show this week on Thursday and Friday, but it'll be pre-recorded. Uh, so tune in for that. Uh, that's it. That wraps it up, fellas. Enjoy the next hour. Got some good guys on there.